I'm here talking to Simon Mutu about um, who's the new chief executive of Telecom, back in the seat for 10 months. You, you, you were here though, when, when, when did you leave? I, uh, I, I finished in the middle of 2008 and went off to run all for the airport for a while. Right. So not very long, you weren't away for that long. No, but over four years. But a lot changed in that four years. We had the yeah. global financial crisis has been there. Yeah. Well, we had the GFC, but uh, the internet became the network, whereas the internet used to be, you know, a thing on the side. Uh, we've had a demerger, so complete change in the industry structure. We've had the combination of Vodafone and Telstra Clear in New Zealand, the emergence of two degrees. So all of those things occurred in the short four years I was off. Uh, off uh, at the airport. So, um, I mean, I think two, two and a half years ago I spoke to Paul Reynolds, your, your predecessor, um, and separation had just been approved at that stage, the Boris, Boris Telecom separation. Two years later, it's apparent that the pace of change inside Telecom has, hasn't slowed down. And I think, I mean, the separation was, was intended to deal with some structural issues, and on top of those structural issues, we've now had all the things that we've just been discussing in terms of unexpected technological change, which yeah. is which is accelerating. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the reinvention process that, that's underway? Yeah. Well, look, the, the demerger essentially shifted telecom from being uh, a traditional fixed and mobile infrastructure company to a much more services centric, very mobile centric business. Actually, we a lot more of our asset base is around. Um, and, and much more focused as a retailer of communication, entertainment and IT services today than you know, just a builder of copper networks or, or fibre networks down streets. And so, so that, when, you, when you reflect that shift in uh, market position, it's required us to adopt more of the thinking around what you would regard as a retailer or a service provider from a from a network company. So Chorus is truly the network, which is not to say that Telecom today still doesn't have a lot of network. We still run the core, the big national core networks up and down New Zealand linking all the big cities together and we still run all the submarine networks and we still have an end-to-end -end mobile network. But but it does mean a lot more of our focus shifts to what you're doing with those networks. So we've, we've set a new strategy, which is about been a service provider and, and uh, been a very future oriented and faster moving organisation and moving upstream into the sort of services and things that people want to do, which is responding to the changing way customers use uh, the networks, the, the, the way that many industries are coming together in, in, in a 24 7 connected world and, and uh, making sure that we're well positioned and, and delivering customers. In, in New Zealand what they need from that. So the first challenge you face is this is this new market which which where you've got full number portability for starters. Mm -hmm. You you're all reselling chorus of services to some extent. Um, and you have a much more much stronger competitor. So what what's how are you responding to that? Well f the first move actually was the first decision I made was to change our settings around uh, our, our, our core uh, KPIs for the business to move it to uh, be a more competitive company which was focused on market share outcomes ahead of near to financial outcomes. So uh, I, I asked the team immediately to shift starts to defend our broadband market position and to grow our position in, in mobile in New Zealand. Uh, we've been successful at that but since, uh, it's almost since the decision was taken, so the company has responded very quickly mm -hmm. uh, to, to be more competitive. We immediately moved our pricing, so we are across the board today. We would price at or around the same price as all of our competitors. We used to be more expensive, we are not anymore, so we, we've met the market on price. We've made some incredible value moves, uh, probably you know, the, the most uh, widely regarded um, you know, big move there would be the, the change to data roaming charges, we would move to a world leading uh, model and the costs for data roaming out of New Zealand are far lower than they are in most other countries today from the move we made there. So that competitiveness 
uh, has come out very quickly and, uh, and we're very proud of the teams and how quickly they've uh, shifted our stance here. So that's, that's a good example of a more pro, and I think you'll see from Telecom over the coming months a pipeline now of new services. The latest little idea was the link up with the football, uh, the UK Football League, in, in, in terms of you know bringing some of that content and things. So we're, we're going to start to move more and more upstream and provide services that people will, might want from uh, from the network. What do you think is more important at the moment in terms of the future of telecom? The market, the changing market, or the or the challenge of the new technologies? Uh, look, I think they they're very equal, right? You know, you, yeah. you, we're a technology business, so you, you've got to you've got to watch technology trends every day. There's mm. just uh, and they move so quickly. They you know there's uh, so technology. You know, we're in that business. Uh, we, we have to go with the flow, we have to make the bets, we have to cover the options and we have to adapt very quickly. Uh, when we you know, when we see something emerge and we didn't pick or we've gone down a path that's turned out to be the dead end path or whatever. So so technology is critical. And uh, and then on the flip side, yeah, we're we're a we're a retailer and uh, and we have to win and re win our customers every single day. Uh, we're up against a global heavyweight in the, in the Vodafone group and some edgy new players in Two Degrees and, and, and some of the other uh, uh, um, uh, other players in the broadband market. Uh, we're up against the world of IT players in our in our big business segments. So you know, every single day we're out there watching what our competition does. Uh, reacting to their moves, trying to get ahead of them with our moves, and, uh, and winning, winning at each point of sale, uh, and each opportunity, and that's a, it's a, it literally is a daily process. Our retail team meet at eight thirty every morning, and look at what every competitor did yesterday. We look right. at every store's performance. Uh, would, did we win in the market yesterday? What are we going to do today? If we weren't, what are we going to do today to get back in front? Digital ventures is an interesting part of this. I mean, it's a, it looks a little bit like an internal disruption strategy. Um, I had a chance to talk to Watson on grass at Ned Hui, who heads, heads that unit up, and he told me a fair bit of a fair bit fascinating set of instructions that you gave him when you asked him to do this. Can you tell us what those were? Look, I, I've said to I've said to Rod, um, you know, break out of any model you might have of how telecom does business today. You can go and set up a unit. I want you to hire a whole lot of young people who know what they're doing uh, to not, you don't have to conform to any telecom standards. You can use your own approach to life. You can buy your own technology, do your own thing, and build me a revenue base of new services, a profitable revenue base of new services in, in the wide range of, of upstream applications and services that people want uh, on, uh, to use on our 24/7 anywhere, anytime connectivity uh, to the to the all data world, and, and so it's about you know, having a bit of the upstream pie, yeah, essentially. Really. Absolutely, and uh, so you know he's he's currently laid out a suite of options. We're working vigorously on mobile commerce uh, applications. We're working on new broadband concepts. We've got. Uh, uh, we've got a pile of work uh, underway working with sort of industry verticals and how we might be able to assist with, uh, with solutions uh, for those industries. We're, we're looking at how we might uh, participate in the, uh, in the paid or subscription video based market and, you know, and, and uh, you know, a, a whole set of things. But it's early days. The basic idea the, is, is to try and build six $50 million revenue businesses. Absolutely, over the next sort of five or six years. Yep, that's the briefing, you know. And, and 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 the point being, in that sort of instruction, is we're not we're not doing this at the fringe. It's we if we're going to make a play here, let's do it with a view to scale. It's we're a big business. And we do four billion in revenue a year. When you do small things in a big business, they have a short life. They usually. Uh, they struggle for survival and they always look irrelevant and then end up being closed. So I'm, we're very clear in entering, if we're going to enter these new markets, we have to do it with an eye on, on, on a decent outcome, scale outcome. Um, 
At a business strategy level, one of them, I mean, one of the things in, in Rod's purview is, is, um, is skinny. And there's this idea of, of businesses like yours, which are being disrupted, being eaten by their own children, mm -hmm. meaning that you create businesses which yep. it's better for you to be competing with yourself than with, with external external competitors. I and mean, is that part of is that actually part of the strategy? Very much so. It's so, so you know, in a in a business, a very a very large incumbent business that's been around a long time with a brand that is heavily positioned in a particular place with a technology stack that's designed around a particular architecture, it, the, 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 the ability to change that at speed is, is um, you know, is low. It's, it's, it, there's just too much inertia in it. So the way a business, you know, accepting that as the reality, then the way you can follow the newer trends in customer preferences is to create new brands in new businesses off to the side that operate in a different way. They have a much narrower product set in, in, in scope, uh, uh, but, but you know, are able to move more quickly, and, and that's a way of adapting to market movements that would be very difficult to do. It's not that we wouldn't want to do that from the core business, but it can, we'd be too slow, so we would never win on that basis. Mm -hmm. So Rod has the ability to do some things outside of it. We're more agile, we can move more quickly and be a player, not miss the boat. Um, now, I know that Paul Reynolds was already pushing the company in this direction, but the company, and you mentioned it earlier, was that the company's got a much more New Zealand focus that regards itself as a New Zealand company, centrally, which I don't know was always the case. Um, why is it important that Tel to Telecom that it manifests this, this in its business? Well, I think it's the unique thing about it. You know, we, we're, we're up against already, you know, our main competitor in the communications market is Vodafone. Uh, they're a global player. They're in 20-something countries around the world. So they bring a global perspective. So when you look at it and say, well, what is, what is it that can be different about telecoms? In the end, if, if, we're all, if all the companies are the same, customers don't have very good choice. So we, will, we would look to emphasise New Zealand as, as a core flank. Uh, and you know, while we acknowledge Vodafone will have some global capabilities that we would find difficult to match, we'd like to have some local capabilities that they would find difficult to match. And, and that is a very healthy competitive environment. It gives customers real choices about the things that matter to them. So we, you know, New Zealandness is a real plan for us and what we want to do is give New Zealanders a confident path to the future that if they're with Telecom, We'll, we'll bring the, the best the world has to offer in a way that's good for New Zealand, safe, secure, but right up there with uh, with the world leading capabilities, and that's what we want to stand for. You've moved very fast to to um, to downsize staff levels and move yourself into a more competitive footer. Um, this is something that a lot of businesses face um, the need to do, but it's hard, and it, and it, and you. you You've done that very effectively, from what I can see. It doesn't seem to have caused that much collateral damage. What did you learn from from the pace of your reinvention, and, and how how did how did do you, I mean? Is there lessons that you could have to pass on to, to other companies that, that are needing to do the same thing? Look, it has been tough. It, 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 it's tough to do that, but it's also very tough on your people when when you have to do a downsizing in that sense. But the, you know, just to be clear, we. We needed to downsize because when you're dropping prices fast to give customers the value they want and need and to be competitive, if you're going to retain profitability, you have to take your cost structure down with it. So we have moved quickly to, you know, principally to be able to meet the market on price. We have had to adjust our cost base to be a competitive player. Now that, you know, we've made a, a big shift with that. I think we learned that fast is good actually. It felt, I, you know, it was reported in the media as brutal and actually when you think about change process and the impact on people, and I've been around this, you know, running big companies for nearly, you know, nearly 30 years, uh, I, I would say there's more, uh, 
more collateral damage and more stress and more strain in these slow, long, elongated, dead live vows and cuts yeah. sort of approach. So we learned actually, you know, in the end, if, we, if you have to do this, people actually want you to move through it quickly and to, to re-establish certainty and confidence. We've, we've done our best to do that. Uh, and be as supportive as we can in the process and hopefully, you know, I've, I've said to the staff, look, there's, we, we all want a bright future, there's a road we have to go down first to have any chance of delivering it in. And, uh, and I would, you know, I, having, having gone, done it in a more bold and quick way this time from other places I've been where we've taken the slow approach, uh, my choice would be to move boldly and quickly and get, get back to a confident position more quickly in the future. Now, you used to work here, obviously. Have you learned anything in the process of this we mentioned about telecom you didn't previously know? Um, look, I've learned lots of things, actually, and, and uh, I've learned that, you know, despite years and years of challenge and, you know, what really tough, uh, tough conditions in our industry and for our company and a lot of change that our people, you know, they, they, the, the key people just love this industry, they care about the business, they want New Zealanders to have good So I, you, you learn, that, you know, uh, that good people are amazingly resilient and, and loyal and committed, so I think we've got great, a great team who we can depend on to deliver and that. So that's been, you know, we've learned that actually the organisation has more capacity to cope with change than you than you would have otherwise thought. Dramatic change. So we we have gone through incredible change. Uh, you know, we're we're down well over a thousand people in the last few months, and uh, as you point out, we haven't dropped the ball. And in fact, we're we're winning in the market at the same time. So already there are dividends from that. So the, you, the capacity for the organisation to cope with dramatic change has surprised everyone, actually surprised me. So, thanks. So when I come back, we'll talk about the telecommunications future pathway for New Zealand.